Hi guys, I'm doing an update on these fires. It is August 7, 2018, and I want to tell you, wow, uh, I saw it last year during the fires. I certainly saw it during Harvey that flooded out Houston. Mainstream media reporting the same canned information and reporting an awful lot of information day after day after day just repeating the same information. Except what you will see is that some of these fires have grown considerably overnight. And I also, before I started making this video talking to you, I looked through my subscriptions and I was focused on the big channels, you know, those with a hundred thousand or more subscribers. And I found it very interesting that none of them are reporting on these fires. Not one. Nothing. Nothing. And, well, they all claim to be Christian. And I find it very interesting that, well, one of them I heard say that the only legitimate channels on YouTube are those who are talking about how Jesus is our Savior in every video or virtually every video. Wow, okay. So I guess I'm not a legitimate channel. And I guess they are. And yet they don't seem to be posting on what is taking place presently, currently. When we have thousands who are suffering the consequences, losing their homes. Nothing is said on these channels about how we can help them. And that to me seems a little odd because it seems obvious to me that Jesus would be all about helping those who are suffering. They, Jesus would not be stuck in the matrix talking about Trump and QAnon I don't get what's going on. Only a few channels seem to be posting. You do have a lot of channels that have that robotic voice that are posting on the fires, but those YouTubers, there's few out there. And you, you tell me if you're you know, subscription, those that you subscribe to, are they posting on these fires? Because you know what? We've got a lot of people suffering right now, and more and more are looking at losing their homes to these fires. Now, Oregon, Washington, uh, even Texas, as you'll see, all of, you're just getting kind of, well, drowned out by the California fires. And there are new fires that erupted yesterday that I'll let you know of. But what I could find on Oregon here, and I, I don't want to have to, you know, spend a lot of time editing, so you're just going to have to put up with, you know, it, it, well, you don't have to put up with anything. You can click off. But here, we've got the Oregon fire, and this was posted yesterday. We do begin tonight with Oregon on fire and growing fears that the wildfires will grow as the temperatures continue to go up. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Renee McCullough. And I'm Matt Templeman. KZI 9 News reporter Tyler Jones shows us the uphill battle firefighters are up against in southern Douglas County and northern Jackson County. Over the weekend, a Type 1 incident management team took control of the two base camps here in the South Umpqua complex to fight the Miles, Columbus, Snowshoe, and Round Top fires. With that Type 1 team comes more fluid communication between the 1,700 personnel fighting the nearly 38,000 acres of wildfires in the area. That will allow them to continue to build on the work that has already been done to contain these fires. As the fire grows and moves into different topography, they take some of those earlier plans and continue to build on them and continue to 
put in those dozer lines, continue to assess the situation given the weather forecast for the upcoming week. But right as they're taking over, temperatures are starting to rise again, which could cause issues for fire containment. The hotness and dryness will be the key component the next two to three days. And then by Friday, we're actually looking like it's going to break down this big, um, we call it a heat ridge but we're going to have um, a wind that's so going to be coming in by Friday and it could be cooler, but then the wind's going to drive the fire. So you really, like I said, it's picking your poison. The fires, formerly known as the South Umpqua Complex fires, are being called by the four names they've been given now that they're no longer considered a complex of fires. With the increasing temperatures, winds, and changing fire patterns, officials say the public needs to stay as informed as possible about these fires. Stay connected with your community and talk to your neighbors about what's going on. Yeah, stay connected with your community, unfortunately. <laughs> There's a lot of communities that have become so disconnected uh, but the communities, I will say, in Northern California, in Redding, in Redding, and it does seem to be the case also with the uh, Lake and Mendocino counties. They're they're coming together, helping one another. But considering the scale of destruction that is taking place in all of these states. We all have to come together somehow, but here, uh, Southern Oregon wildfires, critical week on Taylor Creek fire as weather heats up, triple digit heat to make life tough for Oregon fire crews, Southern Oregon fires, air quality remains brutal as smoke envelops Rogue Valley. There are so, you know, you don't even have to be in the areas where these fires are to be very affected by all of the smoke and ash. Washington fires, Cruz Battle Fire in Eastern Washington, Idaho. But I'm getting very little information in terms of what is happening to people. So if you have found information, um, please pass it along. Texas. Texas enters 205th day of wildfires this year. Fires ignited daily as drought worsens. Interesting that Texas has drought. I have posted many videos with Mr. Texas weather modifier where he on mainstream media is interviewed about how they can and have in Texas with cloud seeding alone been able to drop an awful lot of rain for longer periods of time over larger areas. So when you have that on mainstream media in Texas, you've got your Texas Weather Modification Association. 205 days of wildfires in Texas for just this year. Eastland and Jack counties today are burning, but they're 80 percent contained. Texas, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, sorry for the noise. Texas, just this year, has suffered more than 750 wildfires. Don't you love that I just welcome you into a lot of aspects of my life? Okay, fire officials battle fires across Northeast Texas. This was posted yesterday at 4.41 p.m. Dallas. Fire crews near Dallas spent the weekend battling a number of blazes across the area. One fire broke out in Parker County, west of Fort Worth. Officials say crews worked to protect structures in the area. The Texas A&M Forest Services helped put out the fires. So Saturday afternoon, the blaze had spread about 70 acres and wasn't containable until about 8 p.m. Good news. Okay. So, 
uh, Dallas does seem to not be going up in flames yet, but interesting how uh, in Denton County, vehicles were burned. Yeah, this is a wildfire in Texas. Uh, and it seems to have just hit these vehicles. Okay, let's get to California. Mendocino Complex Fire. Okay, well, let's listen to mainstream media report. And this is from today. And it was posted, I think, about three hours ago. Dangerous heat that's hitting both coasts this morning. The hottest temperatures so far this season, aggravating those wildfires out west. A new one in California is called the Holy Fire. It's leading to helicopter rescues. And the Mendocino Complex Fire, fire is now the state's largest ever. We're going to go to Will Carr, who's on the ground at Tabuco Canyon with the latest. Good morning, Will. And good morning, Michael. Fire crews continue to encounter intense conditions here on the ground. This morning, you can see that hellish orange glow on the skyline behind me. This has turned into another record-setting fire season, and we still have a long way to go. Overnight, the Mendocino Complex fire exploding in size. Now the largest wildfire on record in California's history. For 283,000 acres burning so far, that's nearly 450 square miles. The fire 30% contained. This morning, 9,300 structures in harm's way, 75 homes already burned to the ground. There are now 18 large wildfires burning across the state with 14,000 firefighters working nonstop. The car fire entering its third week, destroying more than 1,000 homes, burning 160,000 acres. Two firefighters injured overnight in the whole... Okay, guys. Um, for the last, certainly three days, all we hear is a thousand, a thousand, a thousand homes burned in the car fire. And, well, three days ago, it was 1,500. And... I showed that in a video that I posted. Mainstream media reported 1,500. Why do they keep saying 1,000, 1,000? They are deflating the numbers, which is very, very concerning. So we don't know how many have been affected. We never hear about any of the... how much wildlife domesticated animals, we don't hear about the animals. Um, we don't even hear about where these people are going that have been evacuated. So, um, but here, so ABC News posts just a few hours ago this video and says it's 75 homes burned and the Mendocino complex fires and the Guardian reports 87 homes. Well, now what is this Trabuco Canyon fire? The, the ABC news reporter was, was he talking about the Mendocino complex fires because that's the ranch and the river fire. What is this Trabuco Canyon fire? And you can watch live, you can watch an hour and 45 minutes of this fire on CBS Los Angeles' YouTube channel. Yes, I copy. Any information you have that you'd like to pass along would be awesome because uh, we've been listening. I know the you know, Elko is at uh, Irvine Lake and that they're looking for three possible missing hikers that are off to the east of the fire but they believe that they are in the clear. But other than that, I have no information whatsoever. Oh, and that, and there's no structures threat. 
No information. He says, it would be good if I could get some information. Uh, holy fire burning in Southern California. Okay. Here, 42 minutes on 23 ABC News. That's essentially what you'll be seeing. I, I'm not even sure what the holy fire is, um, but it is threatening structures. But no structures have been burned. And of course, all of this comes down to dangerous climate change, which I will be posting a video on because I am so unbelievably done with all of the lies that we are hearing I, and because all of these disasters now taking place simultaneously, the flash flooding, the fires, not just in our country, a lot of um, countries. You now, Portugal has their wildfire now. Greece just, you know, had a directed energy wildfire. Oh, and then flash flooding right after it. And then we've got Sweden and we've got Canada and so we have an awful lot of these major disasters. We've got the heat waves in the UK, and I don't want to leave anybody out, but it, it, the list right now, the current list, is so long. They're bringing, they're, they're just piling it on so that people will be forced to believe in climate change, I guess. I guess. Look at everything that's happening. And then you have millions upon millions. I think it's millions upon millions of people who know what's going on, who could share all of the evidence, all of the evidence that these fires, they are not the new normal. They're new, but they sure as hell are not normal. The evidence of directed energy weapons being used to deliberately either create these fires or to make them explode overnight. The flash flooding. We've got so many people who are suffering right now. And it seems more and more just getting added to the list every single day. But you would think that people would be able to think that, okay, if it's climate change, nothing has radically happened. Now, we didn't have uh, something overnight take place to cause all of this climate change. It would be incremental. But what we are seeing are all of these simultaneous disasters taking place major disasters, flash flooding like we have never seen it before, taking place in so many states at the exact same time, all of these fires going on at the exact same time, you would think that people would be able to say, wait a second, something else is going on. Because all of this would not occur overnight. All of this would be incremental changes as the climate is supposedly warming up well all I have to do is do a little bit of research to find that these heat waves are created they're manufactured I have posted videos I have posted the doc documents the evidence winds coming out of nowhere all of these fires have the same characteristics dry conditions, winds that mainstream media has reported at 143 miles per hour. Where did these winds come from? 
we hear over and over that they just came out of nowhere, abrupt, people talking, there was no wind, everything was fine, it was a great day uh, weather-wise, and boom! We've got these exploding fires with massive winds, but it's not just here in the United States, it's not just California. We've got Oregon, Washington, Idaho, we've got uh, the Ferguson fire, Yosemite's, that Yosemite now is closed indefinitely. Uh, we've got BC, British Columbia fires. We've got Ontario, Portugal, Sweden, and Greece. All of the winds. They all have the same exact characteristics. Isn't it interesting that at the exact same time we have these very high winds that are fueling the fires all over the world? No. Nothing is normal, and it really should be begging questions. So, the Mendocino complex fire explodes in size. Now, second largest in state history. Oh, when was this posted? It was posted just yesterday. Well, it's now the largest in state history. We've got a new fire erupting in Northern California, homes threatened, and this is in San Luis Obispo County. Um, 60 homes were evacuated in this old ranching and farming area near Cabello, which is about 100 miles north of San Francisco. The evacuations were mandatory, and it's 40 miles away from the Mendocino complex fire. So it's 40 miles south, and it's threatening. It's burned, sorry, it's burned. Or the Mendocino, the Mendocino and Lake. Here they say seven homes. This is the Mendocino complex fire. This was posted yesterday. But we have the Guardian saying 87 homes. We've got ABC News claiming just a couple of hours ago it was 75 homes. It's threatening more than 12,000 homes. And yes, there are people in these areas that have had to suffer this over and over and over again, like Jessica um, Lytle or Little. She fled a fast-moving Northern California wildfire in 2015 right in the same area that She's now having to suffer another fire. She didn't lose her home in 2015. Her mother did. And now she has evacuated. And honestly, what I'm thinking right now is just I want, to, I want this to end. That's what she said. She's physically, emotionally exhausted. And here, this firefighter and spokesman for the fire crews is talking about the winds, the winds, the winds. Well, you know, unfortunately, what happens after, you know, everybody kind of moves on once the fires are out. But the people who have lost their homes, they don't move on. If they're wealthy, they don't have much to worry about. They rebuild, they have uh, places to rent or places to go, maybe second homes. But for the large majority, who are not wealthy, they look at an endless nightmare. Many people go homeless because they do not have the resources to recover. So here we have California counties with the highest concentration of homes vulnerable to wildfire. And this was posted yesterday. Well, there are 2 million homes in California that are at risk for wildfires. And remember, Californians, you've got your Governor Moonbeam telling you. He told you last year. He's telling you again. There will be more fires. There will be more fires. There will be more fires because this is the new normal. Well, these fires are deliberately set 
And all one has to do is take a look to recognize this is not normal. When you have homes completely decimated, the tubs, the sinks, everything gone to dust, the cars melting, but all of the vegetation around them, fine. Okay, that should beg questions. But with your Jerry Brown, Mr. Climate Change, pushing, pushing, pushing that agenda, there will be more homes that go up. But with each fire now, you have more and more people losing their insurance. This is why this coming out yesterday is really important. Because you're looking at 10, uh, or 2 million, 2 million homes. You're looking at the owners of those homes facing facing premiums that could skyrocket to up 50% or losing their insurance entirely. This is what happened last year with the Napa uh, County, the Sonoma County, Santa Rosa fires, Thomas fire. This is exactly what happened. Insurance companies were dropping people in those areas. We're not going to cover you anymore. Or they had to face premiums that really skyrocketed. So this is one of the ways in which they also get people to move out of these areas. They make it, they make it nearly impossible to rebuild due to the new rules and regulations that are very costly because everything's got to go green. Due to, well, if you're going to rebuild in a fire-prone area and you don't have insurance, then you're rebuilding, you're spending a tremendous amount of money to rebuild something that you're not going to have any kind of insurance coverage. And your governor, your leader is telling you this is going to be the new normal and you're going to see more and more fires, just like the ones that are taking place now, many people will be leaving. And many people are moving to Texas, moving to Idaho, uh, Arizona, leaving Texas. We also have another problem, which I can't get to the Merck. Fury news, they want me to spend money, but the other problem is construction workers. Oh, shortage. Well, we saw this in Houston, we saw this in the fires last year. We're seeing it again. There aren't anybody to rebuild the homes. What's going on here? I guess Trump has just miraculously turned around the economy and everybody is working. Everybody is working, so there's a great shortage of construction workers. All of this is planned, deliberately designed to make rebuilding just an abject nightmare for people. They have to suffer the trauma of these fires, the loss of their home, and then it does become an endless nightmare. Plus the fact the smoke, the heat, the poor air quality expected in Sacramento region. How long will it last? It's going to last a long time. North of Sacramento, the whole area. I've had subscribers leave comments who don't live in the areas of the fires but live next to them. And they're talking about the smoke. Some are just walking around with air ma uh, with these masks on their face. The ash that is falling on their properties, and it's toxic. This is a major, major, major deal. And I understand that there's an awful lot of major deals going on. But when you have this disaster that just continues every single day, taking more and more people out. I do not understand for the life of me how it is that we have channels 
that are not posting on these fires at all. I do not understand how it is with the hundreds of thousands of subscribers that they have that they are not thinking about how they can pull their subscribers together and, and get some action taking place to help people. You know, these agendas are really ramping up now. They are accelerating at a really high speed, taking out so many people. And while I will say that from what I have seen, the communities around Reading, in Reading, they have mobilized and they are working together and helping one another out. But we as fellow Americans, the scale of destruction that we are seeing, what, you know, what I would love to be living is in a country where everybody was focused on trying to help one another. Well, you know, that, <laughs> the, the psyche, the American psyche is not about that. And um, I don't, it's heartbreaking to see all of this. So I'll link below to everything. Um, yeah, if you see other people it, it, posting on on these fires, if you hear anybody, you know, suggesting ways to help these people, let me know, please. But I'm sorry, these big channels, channels who are self-declared Christians, something is very wrong with this picture, that they're just, they never ever, they never ever seem to post any videos on solutions, that solution being the solutions in you. We've got to change. We've got to think outside the box. Um, they never talk about banding together to, to take action to help one another. And of course, you know, the help, you know, will be a community thing. They never talk about building up community. I don't get it. All links are below.